Learning and Memory. Hi, I'm Dr. Asafelia, and I was told you all were curious about the neurobiology of learning and memory. I'd be happy to show you around my lab. So here are the fruit flies that I use in my lab. I can train them to learn different tasks. I can pair a smell with shock to make the flies form a memory. And this is called long-term potentiation. Whether in humans or flies, the formation of memories are very similar when we get right down to it. This is how a neuron in the brain looks. In each neuron, there's the DNA headquarters. We'll talk more about this later. There are millions of neurons in the fly brain that are connected to one another. Look, here are two. We'll name the first neuron the smell neuron, and the one receiving the signal the shock neuron. When the flies smell something and get shocked at the same time, they'll remember to avoid that smell in the future. In order to form that memory, the smell neurons release these tiny molecules called neurotransmitters. These neurotransmitters bind to a door on the shock neuron and open it right away. All right then, let's take a closer look at one of these doors to see what goes through them. Outside the neurons, there are other tiny molecules of sodium, like you find in salt. When the doors open, sodium immediately travels into the shock neuron. Once the sodium molecules are inside, they signal other tiny molecules called calcium, just like those in milk, to come in right away as well. When calcium travels into the neurons, it has many special effects. It changes characteristics of the neuron faster than you can say LTP. These doors are now better at bringing sodium and calcium in. They're stronger, which means the neuron will be much more sensitive to the next signal from the smell neuron. Also, calcium will travel through many other different pathways that take a little longer, like riding a bus, to ultimately arrive at DNA headquarters, where it will order the neuron to make more doors and door parts. The new door parts will make the neuron grow bigger, increasing the surface area for more doors to be placed. The doors are now more efficient, allowing more molecules of calcium and sodium to travel into the neurons even faster than before. You have a stronger and bigger neuron that allows more molecules to travel, so overall, this shock neuron is much more efficient in receiving signal from the smell neuron. Now, when the fly smells this odor again, the neurons will remember the shock as well. So when the flies are around that smell again, they will be expecting a shock and will move to avoid the smell. This is how a memory is formed through long-term potentiation between neurons. The end.